Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. It's a Sunday, it's raining, no tennis. It's been happening frequently this winter in Malta, so I'm trying to figure out other things to do. Usually I go to the gym, uh, but today was too depressing and I had to take my mother to the airport first. So I decided to do some work and, and chill out. Instead, there's also the Chess World Championship that I'm following with uh, Magnus Carlsen and Ian Nepnomiachi, something like that. Uh, I have a video about that on my other channel, Jonas 4.0. Please check that out if you want. I'm going to make more content there about other things, Malta, music, whatever. Uh, but this video is about the best rackets of the year. I'm not going to go through them and what my favorite picks are in this video. I just want to give you kind of a teaser and I also want to open up the question to you to put it in your comments what is the best racket for you that you tried in 2021 and it doesn't have to be a 2021 racket but i'm gonna focus on the ones i've reviewed even if it's a 2020 racket or is coming out in 2022 like the boom pro so that's gonna be my uh, modus operandi for this video and then i will release the gear of the year which i do every year uh, very soon but I'm, I'm currently working on it trying to figure out uh, the different categories which one I, I feel is the most interesting if it's a tweener or a control oriented racket which one could suit certain players and so on so I'm going to try to dig deeper into that but I, I thought we could have a video on this Sunday where we look at the list of rackets I've reviewed this year and it's quite an extensive list sometimes I get shocked myself when I'm seeing this kind of like, have I played with all these rackets? No wonder, you know, I can't play tennis properly <laughs> or something like that. You get that feeling. So uh, I just think it's a bit funny because I forget, you know, obviously how, how many rackets I, I play in a year. Uh, so I'm going to just pull up the list here. As you might notice today, I'm, I'm changed the background. I, I have the green screen on the other side. I'm not using that. I got some good feedback. I thought it was sensible. Uh, it's nicer to have a real background and the background I downloaded and try to use the kind of digital background. It does look a little bit cheesy, doesn't look great. I think some of you were uh, a little bit also distracted by the lights. I thought I'd give it a try. I mean, I'm an experimenting here. It's, it's a fun thing I, I'd like to do. So just testing where I feel like there's kind of a, a nice uh, vibe. The sound is OK. Uh, the visuals are OK. And obviously you have to look at me no matter what. I cannot change that. But uh, I wanted to play around a bit with the green screen. And now I'm back to rackets in the background and even the boom box down there. So hopefully um, for some of you this is better. For some of you this might be worse. I know there are a lot of strong opinions about the intro music. I'm going to keep experimenting a bit. I have that standard song that you like. I'm going to use that from time to time. But I also like to experiment a bit. Back to rackets, right? Uh, so the best rackets of the year. I did put an alphabetical list of these rackets on uh, TennisNerd.net. Please all, always check out TennisNerd.net. I'm trying to update as often as I can. Uh, not always having the time. Next year, I'm going to be a bit more freed up with time to focus on tennis. Um, I will have less money, but I will try to focus more on on creating tennis content, creating other pieces of content because that's what I love to do. So I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a, of a plunge into that world uh, from 2022. Um, fingers crossed it's going to work out. Otherwise, I'll just crawl back into the corporate world again, which where I've been for, for many years now. So I've reviewed a lot of rackets. If we just go through the list, actually, but I tried the Angel K7 Lime XL and Cyan XL. Two very interesting frames uh, that I both enjoyed. The, the Cyan was a little bit easier to use. And the, my hitting partner, Matthew, actually said I, I played really well with that one. I should probably have stayed with that one. I don't know. As you know, you just move on after a frame. But that played actually with good power, good spin and nice feel. The, the Angel um, K7 line has Aramid in the layup and they're pretty comfortable frames. Can be a bit muted at times like all Angel rackets. Uh, they do have foam filling, the custom rackets, uh, which I like, but sometimes that can create a damp and muted, obviously stable and more comfortable feel. Uh, not everyone's cup of tea, but I actually think they are great sticks. So uh, if you're interested, check out Angel. They're in the description below. I actually feel like they, they do create some great rackets and you can actually customize your specs for the custom racket. I tried the Pure Drive Tour. That's a 2020 racket, uh, very powerful, high swing weight. Uh, I tried the Dunlop CX rackets, the new CX. That was a slight improvement. Actually, really liked those. 
retried the CX200 Tour uh, here a, a while back and, and really enjoy that. Still very nice control frame, not a lot of free power, might need some customization, but the CX line was very good. The CX400 Tour, probably the most user friendly of the bunch. Uh, the booms, I'm, I'm going through them, I'm testing them. I've tried the prototype, which is the Boom MP. I'm gonna review the retail Boom MP as well and try to compare them. The Boom Pro, I'm on my kind of second impressions, diving into the Boom Pro with new string setups and so on. Uh, the prestigious updated, uh, interesting update, not huge, a little bit of a different uh, sensation thanks to the Oxetic tech. I wasn't a huge fan compared to the MIPE, Prestige MP, but I've talked to a lot of people that actually prefer the Oxetic line because it gives them a little bit more free power, and I completely understand that. I've actually played them more side by side, and it seems to be a little bit stiffer in the layup without being harsh. So you're getting a bit more free power with the Oxetic Prestigious over the previous generation. That would be my take, similar kind of to the Blades in a way. So Prestige Rackets, Extreme Tour and Knight. Extreme Tour and MP in new night uh, paint. Extreme Tour is one of my uh, top rackets in my racket bag, so still very much enjoying that one. Need to dial in the string a bit, a bit more. I know I get some questions and I'll get back to that. Uh, Speed MP and Pro, good updates with the spiral fibers. That was early in the year. Uh, probably like the MP customized a bit better. Uh, the Pro felt a bit heavy to me, probably got a bit higher spec. Try the Pacific X fast, nicer light the rackets for beginners. A bunch of Prince rackets, the Vortex, very interesting futuristic looking frame that I really liked, the Vortex 310 that was. The Ripstick, maybe the most fun rackets of the year, design wise, I really enjoy the power and spin. Might not be for my game, I don't do these kind of uh, heavy spin and power rackets so well, but these rackets were great. And the Prince actually came up with some excellent sticks this year. The Synergy 98 was interesting, although a little bit of a lively string bed for my liking. The Twist Power X100 I tried recently, and that was actually uh, very surprising as well in a good way. I really like that frame. I haven't tried the Tor X97, uh, so that's something I really want to do. For you tennis elbow sufferers and, and players worried about arm issues, check out the Prokenex uh, KI rackets. Very good, review them uh, this year as well. Super nice, uh, I did the Solinko Whiteout just the other video. Technifiber did some good lines as well. The T-Fight RS300 was very nice, uh, as well as the Iga Rebound. So those two frames are very similar. Both very nice, uh, versatile frames. Uh, I still struggle with the grip shape, but I do like those. Uh, the V-Core Pro 97 and D and H and 100 uh, were, all in an, were all a nice update, softer feel. I, I almost fell in love with the 97H, but in the end it proves a little bit too heavy, but that just hit the ball like a tank. I could really attack and feel confident and get a lot of free points from that stick. But when I'm on the fence, that was, was a bit too heavy. Uh, I know several people like the D, I uh, thought that was a little bit more powerful than the previous generation, which is true. So they probably, they pretty much went the same way as the Prestigious uh, with the Yonex uh, V-Core Pro. So for advanced players, the V-Core Pro and the Prestigious are both excellent updates to check out. Technifiber uh, also did a TFX1, which is a little bit of a clash style power frame. Tough to control, but also fun racket. Kind of similar to the Ripstick in that sense that it's a lot of power, a lot of spin, uh, fun to use, uh, but still a bit tough to control. Obviously, that's the that's the downside of these these um, power rackets. I tried the Regna as well, the Onyx Regna 98. That was an excellent frame, but a bit stiff. I actually felt like it was a bit too stiff for me. I prefer the regular E-Zone 98. And uh, I'm, from what I've heard, the new E-Zones are on the way for testing, so I'm really keen to check out those. Uh, we had the Vulcan V-Cell 10, the 300 and 320. Prefer the 300. The 320 felt like it landed a bit in no man's land. Wasn't sure about the demographic, quite heavy frame, but still light swing weight. The 300 was faster, whippier, easier to customize, just felt like a, the way the frame was intended to be. So adding that extra weight didn't really improve it so much, in my opinion. 
Uh, the new blades, uh, perhaps the best update. I really like the new blades. I've been playing with them quite a bit. So the blade version eight, they look great and they actually play great. So um, the three big dragons of tennis rackets, the head, Wilson and Yonex, they did some great updates to the Prestige, the V Corp Pro, and the Blade. So those are all good, good rackets for advanced players, control-oriented rackets, and so on. Babala, not so many updates uh, this year. A pretty slow year from them. We'll see if more happening. 2022 uh, might be some distribution issues and so on. And another frame I liked from Wilson was the Pro Staff 61100. I didn't quite get the control in the end to to consider switching, but I actually bought two more of that frame, or actually bought three in total. Uh, so the switch was imminent, but I just couldn't quite uh, gel with it, and I'm back then to, to the Prestige, uh, which I usually play. Uh, so lots of frames. I've tried, uh, you know, revisited the Clash, the Extreme Tour. I've, I've done a lot of reviewing, got some wins on custom rackets. I had Pro Stock TGT. Babla Pure Strike 1820. It's been a busy year of tennis rackets, also some strings and shoes that we will get into. But I'm really keen now to hear what is the best racket of the year and why. Uh, the best answers I'm going to send you a t shirt, tennis nerd t shirt, dry fit. Uh, you're going to look cool. Send me a photo when you're wearing it and I'm posted on my socials. Uh, you'll be instantly famous as well. Joking, of course. But uh, that would be fun. So, um, that's pretty much it for now. I, I, that's a long list, a lot of interesting frames. I had a lot of fun playtesting these, and I thank you for your support watching my humble reviews and content that I produce. And if you want to support my work, check out patreon.com slash tennis nerd uh, for more content and the chat function. And you can also purchase any service or racket in the, from the links in the description below. I get a small commission at no extra cost to you. Helps the, the channel stay alive. Thanks a lot. Please subscribe, tell your tennis friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.